Well, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, When Perfection Matters, Visual Surface Inspection with Imaging Photometers, where we're going to talk about this emerging application for the types of calibrated uh, measurement systems like Radiant provides. My name is Kathy Macbeth, and I have the pleasure today of introducing today's speaker, Dr. Andy Blowers, who's Radiant's Project Engineering Manager. Andy leads the development of our um, visual surface inspection solutions for our global customer base. He has, uh, he brings with him about 20 plus years of machine vision experience. And if you're wondering where that fantastic accent comes from, he is a New Zealand native who spent most of his uh, schooling in the UK, where he earned a PhD at De Montfort University. Uh, before I pass the reins over to Andy, I'm going to uh, talk about a couple of housekeeping items. We will be taking questions at the end of the presentation. Um, however, you can ask a question at any time during the presentation. Uh, just use the panel you'll see generally on the right-hand side of your screen. Type a question into the pane and press submit, and we will queue those up and answer them at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, I am going to pass things over to Andy. Thank you for that introduction. And welcome everybody to this uh, webinar. I'd just like to go over the agenda first. Uh, talk a little bit about Radiant and the automated visual inspection, the objectives of automated visual inspection, the typical tests we might perform, uh, and why I use a calibrated measurement solution for surface inspection, visual surface inspection, typical components of a system, and then we'll finish off with some questions and answers. I know a lot of you listening today are familiar, old Radiant hands, but let me just introduce Radiant Vision Systems to those of you who aren't. We're a leading provider of automated visual measurement systems, uh, particularly to the consumer electronic industry. We do a lot of light and display analysis. We have thousands upon thousands of inspection systems testing millions of displays in production. We apply display test principles to develop a breakthrough in visual surface inspection systems ensuring a cosmetically perfect product. It's a very important issue in the industry today. Radiance design, designs and manufactures and sells camera-based inspection systems, very high resolution that automate visual defect measurement in flat panel displays. We're headquartered here in sunny Washington uh, in the USA with offices in China and Korea. So why Radiant Vision System? Well, quantifying human visual perception is a very important uh, issue. It, it gives you a way of counting the quality of an object. And in particular, we want to focus on the human perception in terms of brightness, color, and scatter, or reflective light. Automated visual inspection will allow us to pinpoint and quantify quality issues and defects, allowing past failed determinations to be automated against a consistent standard. All our cameras are, are traceable standard cameras. That goes back to a, a standard like NIST. Why would we want to do it? Well, because customers expect quality. This is a a growing demand. Perhaps, you know, 20 years ago, function was, was key. Now quality is a con constant driver in the need for repeatable and accurate automated visual inspection systems. And, you know, typically we look at a lot of things in the consumer electronics industry, but this is applicable to a broad range of applications. So what are we going to try and achieve with automated visual surface inspection? What are our objectives? Number one, improve the customer experience. This is a, a, a very important aspect. Perfection matters. Customers are getting far more choosy. To the electronics consumers, 
yeah, this could be smartphones, computers, tablets, watches, other types of wearable devices, any sort of high-end product that uh, where you, you feel that you should be buying a quality product. And consumers of other high-end products as well, such as automobiles, durable goods, maybe you know, a very high-end refrigerator. You'd be worried about the surface finish on that. Another aspect of, of why to do this is to reduce production costs. Don't allow escapes or what we call you know, flawed products from leaving the factory. This is very costly to the, to the factory. You want to reduce the customer returns, prevent lost revenue, and improve the process consistency. Another aspect of using machine vision or, or radiant vision to solve these types of issues is to increase the automation. Humans can see and make very good judgment calls upon rules, but you know, this is humans get tired. They, they suffer from Friday afternoon or Monday morning disease. It's, it's a, they're not consistent with each other over time and they're, and they're not consistent with each other. So what are the typical tests we might perform with one of our cameras? So it's quite a long list, and this is only really scratching the surface, as it were. So using uh, contrast detection, spatial measurement, mirror detection, by mirror we're talking about blemishes within uh, an area, pattern matching and OCR, optical character recognition, the following attributes can be detected and quantified. So in particular, uh, aspects like surface. In the surface, we're looking for scratches, uh, dents or, or divots in the surface, dings, uh, edge deformations, particles, foreign materials, fingerprints, oil stains, uh, mismatched logos, bad quality logos. Uh, you know, any type of cosmetic issue within those type of areas. Features, we might want to verify that we have the right connectors. The connectors are of good quality in the right position. Um, in particular, with something like a, a, a cell phone, is the camera well aligned with the lensing on the on the fascia on the on the outer plate? Are the buttons it? Is it the right keyboard for the right uh, laptop? Are the are the keys? well positioned? Are they well spaced from one another? Are their cosmetic qualities consistent and, and clean? Do we have an even gap around everything? I mean, it, the human eye is very good at edge detection and we can really perceive when gaps are, uh, aren't uniform. Patterns. Let's make sure we have the right label. Um, let's make sure that the text is legible. Uh, this could be important in, you know, in towards the pharmaceutical, where you want to make sure you have a, the correct data on on the on, on the bottle. The label is in the right location, um, and it's correct. Yes. Other attributes like the surface finish: Are we glossy? Is uh, is it the right surface? Is it the right texture? Is the texture uniform? So that those those would be typical tests we'd look at. So here's some sample tests of, of you know, what we might look on a tablet computer. So we would inspect within the display area, which is you know, Radiance Real Home Run or Strong Suit. This is what we do a lot of. But whilst we have that device captive, there's all sorts of other issues we can look for. So within the surface, we might look for the particles, the contaminants, as we say, the air bubbles or fingerprints, polarizer problems functionality of the display. And around the surface of the border, also we could be looking for fingerprints. We could verify it's the right bezel on the device and that there aren't scratches. And as I alluded to earlier, the camera, that can be very important. And in this case, maybe the power button, make sure it's in the correct orientation. Tablets have multiple sides, so we should also think about what's on the backside. 
whilst you have the device within a system, that's the time to inspect it. Let's limit the number of times we handle the device. So whilst we're here, let's have a look at the backside and the types of things we might be looking for there again are surface defects within the, the uniform area. And that could be a textured area, could be highly reflective, multiple colors, uh, looking for logos, labels, cameras, gaps, and connectors. So all standard stuff. So here's an example, perhaps, of, of what we might be looking for in terms of particles. So particles are what we term you know, a very small blemish. It could be uh, free-floating, or it could be actually uh, a raised part on, on the uh, device under test. So typically, it's a result of dust. Or sometimes it can be captive dust between layers, particularly in displays. But this can also happen within, uh, within the lamination process for the, for the housings. Uh, particles aren't, aren't desirable because when you that out-of-box experience, you don't want to open up your, your brand new shiny product and find some distortion there because of some dust that was in there. It, it detracts from the, the quality. So in this case, we have an example of where we have a test image and that we're looking for in that location, some various particles. We locate particles within various zones of that display. All this information can be fed back to the factory for process control. Um, another one, let's look at notebook computers as an example of where surface inspection can be applied. And you can see there's multiple areas. Uh, a notebook is, is very interesting because it has eight surfaces compared to a, a tablet, which only has those six surfaces, because you have the interior as well. So in, in this case, we could be looking at making sure we have the feet on the device, making sure, again, that there's no defects within that uniform region, that our gaps are correct, that the speaker grill is, is correctly positioned, and all the, the vents are open, the battery compartment is in place. Um, all of these are traditionally inspections you do with a human operator. But again, as we've got this device captive for looking at the display, this is a value add that we can, we can give. Looking at the keyboard, again, we, we talked about this a little earlier, how we can go and verify it's the correct keyboard, that the quality of the keys is correct, the location is correct, um, and that any other icons or peripheral labels on that surface are correct. And we can also inspect the touchpad area, make sure that the quality there looks good and consistent. And again, on the display side, there's always, or typically there's a bezel. Sometimes with the edge-to-edge -edge displays, you don't see that, but maybe there's some, still some quality aspects we want to look at around the edge of the display, such as chips and dings. And also we would look at our standard inspection portfolio there. One of the most common type of defects we're going to see are scratches and dents. Um, a lot of the time, the, these parts are heavily handled by operators installing components. And every time you handle a part, there's always a, a chance to introduce contamination or some other blemish. So scratches, we, we look at we, some characteristics that define a scratch. We'd look at the contrast relative to illumination angles, and scratches would have some sort of direction and length type properties. So there's ways we can differentiate defects from one another. A dense attributes, for example, can be measured and used to determine you know, what orientation the dent is in and whether it's uh, within tolerances or not. Also, as we're, we're capturing, and again, we're, we're focusing a lot on consumer electronics, which is our, our main area of expertise and uh, where we, we have a, a lot of systems. But as we're going down the line, there's many opportunities for quality inspection. And in, in this case, we can use, do some assembly verification, location, make sure all the parts are in there, the screws are there, the connectors are correctly installed.
So why use a calibrated color measurement solution? Well, one of the main thing, reasons is we can use calibration to allow us to mimic human perception. And to do that, we really have to hit on a, a couple of things. First, we have to have a device that is traceable. So calibration gives us that traceability that to know that one camera, two cameras, three cameras, all should produce the same data given the same conditions. We want a high resolution CCD in our cameras because although the human eye isn't as high resolution as our cameras, it's very good at focusing in on detail. And with a machine vision type solution, you can only really do that by capturing high resolution in all areas. And particularly important is having a good dynamic range, a high dynamic range. Why is that important? Well, because contrast is what helps us define defects. And when you are dealing with a scene that has high overall contrast and you're looking for very subtle defects in a local area, then you need a strong dynamic range to capture that contrast. And very importantly, you need a broad suite of software algorithms that will allow you to detect this good imaging detail. So as I alluded to earlier, low contrast. So here we have an example of a very high contrast image, but we're looking for details in a low contrast area. In this case, we're looking for black screws in a, in a black area towards the edge of the, in a shadowed area towards the edge of the display. If we didn't have a high contrast camera, you can see in the lower images, uh, if we look at the right hand image, there's a red area where a screw has been seen to be not missing, and in the left area, it's been detected. Even on, on my monitor, I cannot see that. But with our high bit depth cameras, we can achieve that type of contrast detection. So we have an advantage with our algorithms in looking for defects in unknown location and un an unknown type. So it's, it's finding the unknowable, or I'll know it when I see it. Typical machine visions focus on known locations and known defects, or a known defect within an unknown location, or a known location and an unknown defect. But we like to think we capture the whole package. It's important that we can make judgment calls within a, a very short time because we have to maintain process flow. So some acceptable variation requires a judgment call or just noticeable difference, as we call it, a JND. Repeatability is important, but reprodu reproducibility is critical. And reproducibility means system to system reproducibility. If I have system one, I should get the same results with the same part on system two. Mm. And it's important that we meet the cycle time requirements. Once we have it captured, this gives us comprehensive data. This is a very important aspect on why to use uh, machine vision type inspection relative to a human. The process improvements, Pareto extraction, the ability to grade reliably and perform statistical process control all feed in to improving the yield at the factory and the overall product. So what are the components of a system? Key issue is illumination and fixturing. If you don't hold the part correctly, if you don't illuminate it correctly, you, you, it doesn't matter how good your camera is, it's going to struggle to get the best quality image. The best quality image is what your software then needs to process and come up with your overall solution. So we could really broadly say that the systems can be split into two categories. Inline systems, which we'd call fully automated, where the, in this case we have a, a system that sits over a cont continuously moving line and uh, does inspection on the fly, or an offline system where 
this could be used as an audit or a QA type system, but maybe you only want to inspect you know, a certain sampling of, of your product. And this, these would typically be human loaded. So, um, types of components of the system or imaging automated testing systems options, imaging, single or multiple cameras, controlled lighting, the ability to control the DUTs, that's device under tests position, loading and unloading, some solution specific type integrations such as pattern generators, code readers, shop floor control systems. In conclusion then, and I, I'm running a little long so I'm going to, oh actually I'm, I'm, I've been told I'm fine, very good. In conclusion, is this solution right for my application? Well, you know, the cosmetic appearance of my product is very important. If that's that, if that's important to you, this this is a, a solution could be right. The acceptability of the product requires a judgment call. Consistency and repeatability in my process are critical. I have tact time requirements to meet. My product requires a highly detailed inspection. Defects in my product may be very small and low contrast. Defects may be unpredictable and randomly occurring. The impact associated with a fault, a faulty product leaving the factory is big. I need data to track quality issues. And human inspection and other technology solutions have failed to meet my requirements. If you've answered yes to any of those, then this solution is applicable. In fact, these are the top 10. There are numerous other reasons why this might be an important solution. All right. I'd like to thank you all for listening in today. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Andy. Um, so as Andy mentioned, we are uh, going to open uh, things up for questions now. And as I mentioned before, if you have a question, go ahead and enter it into the pane located on uh, usually the right-hand side of your screen and go ahead and submit that. Um, just start things off, um, one of you has asked, uh, will this be available uh, as a recording uh, after today? And the answer is yes, we will have a recorded version available as well as the slides to today's presentation. Those will be available on our website and you should be getting an email to that link uh, within a couple of days here. So I'm going to pass this back to Andy and have him answer a couple of the uh, questions that are coming up. Okay, so the first question I see here is, can this technology be applied to products other than consumer electronics? Well, short answer is yes. I mean, our main focus is consumer electronics, but really anywhere that you have uniformity issues or um, aspects of, of, of quality that you want to capture that are visual, this is an applicable solution. It's important that you know, the, we can illuminate and handle the part correctly, but uh, there's no reason why it couldn't be applied to uh, you know, neighboring technologies to consumer electronics, um, such as, for example, you could look at it in terms of anything within the plastic industry or, or perhaps an automotive in terms of, you know, body finishes, etc. I see another question here is, what is J&D? Uh, so I, I very quickly glossed over that the J&D stands for just noticeable difference. And what that really means is, you know, 50% of the population may be able to see that there's some variation there. And this is a, a quantifiable uh, measurement. It's... Uh, Something that they, you know, they've done a lot of statistical analysis on, gathered <clears throat> people of all age groups and, and, and visual acuity, 
and uh, shown many samples to and came, came up with a quantifiable contrast value that is a just noticeable difference. Uh, and traditionally, and th this is determined by the what they call the LAB space and looking for delta E's of, of difference. And a just noticeable difference is five delta E's. But in, in standard terms, it's what can 50% of the population just detect, just notice. Oh, and okay, so here we are. Can this inspection system inspect curved surfaces? That's a very good question. So the, there's a short and long answer to that. Uh, the short answer is yes. The long answer is but me, there's a lot of preparation you have to do. The important aspect of, of the curved surface is the focal range and the illumination. So with good fixturing and good illumination and part presentation, you can look for defects within curved surfaces. Uh, next question is, what percentage of your solutions are custom built versus off the shelf products? So all our cameras are off the shelf products, but we typically, when we are looking at surface inspection, we are integrating into a fixture with illumination and uh, part placement and controls. So there is some solution providing that we do there in terms of defining the illumination and the fixturing. And we try to you know, limit it to a, a standard set of fixtures, but we can turnkey to uh, just about any type of device. So in a percentage aspect, it's, a, it's not quite a 50-50. It's more 80% are what we would call turnkey for this type of application, while 20% are standard off the shelf. So another question is, what are the key differences between Radiance technology and other machine visions? Well, again, as, as I talked to a little earlier in, in the slide, our camera has a very good high dynamic range, very uh, high resolution, traceable uh, measurements which make it reproducible. And reproducible is, is, is the key here. Because if you want to spread this over factories within, you know, all around the world, you want to know that you're getting the same result everywhere. And uh, another question is coming in. Do you use single illumination sources or different ones for different defect contrast? Uh, for example, for scratches or for missing screws. Uh, the answer is uh, for, for our we, we try to limit the number of illumination sources we use, but in some cases, it's very uh, typical for us to add additional illumination parts on. For example, scratches, uh, we would typically use something we, we term dark field illumination, which is a very low angle incidence of light because a scratch is a surface deformation and it, it, it scatters back to the camera better when you have a low angle light. But a low angled light doesn't give you a lot of reflective information if you're looking for information in logos. So traditionally we combine one or two lighting solutions. Sometimes we've had some very tailored lighting solutions, polarized light for different types of, uh, or, color, or filters for different types of problems. Okay, one last. Oh, I see there's one last question coming up here. What is the best dynamic range of Radiant Vision Systems Illuminance cameras? Well, that's, that's one of those ones where I'll, I'll have to go back to the spec sheet and, and get back to you on that. So we will email you with, with that response and we'll, we'll attach it with the meeting notes. But we have uh, a very good range. And, and somebody else has just come in under the wire here so, and is asking if we build fixturing solutions as well. And, and the answer for that is, is yes. When the, for, for the, the right type of opportunity and, and, and um, structure, we, 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 we do complete turnkey solutions. 
All right. Thanks, Andy. I think that's a great note to end it on, and we are right on time here. As I mentioned, you'll get an email with a link to a uh, recorded version as well as the slides to this presentation. And uh, if we missed your question, uh, feel free to contact us at the email address that you see on the screen, info at radiantvs.com, and we'll be sure to get back to you. So thanks so much for your time today. Thanks for joining us.